This is Capsule on LiveAndLimbo.com. My name is Sean Chen. And I'm Dakota Arsenault, and this is an adventure into music, film, and pop culture. How's it going, Dakota? I'm doing quite well. Very good. It's been a while since you've been on the show. It has. It feels like it's been a few months at least. I guess I've been busy with my own show now. Yes, that's right. And we'll give that a quick plug right now. So you have ContraZoom. It's our film, like all film podcast. How, how's should- that been going? It's been going great. I, I do it with Andreas, who also hasn't been on Capsule in a while. Um, but we just released our Mad Men episode. I know it's been a little bit since the show ended, but still. Uh, and we've got a few more things up our sleeves coming soon. So hopefully uh, we keep going strong. Awesome, awesome. And so this episode is going to be about music festival camping, because we do have we're in the middle of uh, music festival season here in uh, Toronto, Canada, but we haven't seen too many of these camping ones. Like there's a few of them in the U.S. and you've been to some, right, Dakota? I have. Uh, I've been to Bonnaroo three times now, wow. and I, I definitely believe this is one of the first of its kind in Ontario, if not the first. Or like a major of- one, like a major. It's, one. it's definitely one of the the first major one for sure. And so for this, you've found um, a great person to talk all about uh, the camping experience. You want to introduce him? Yeah, sure. Uh, Andrew Partridge is a guy who I met online and he's actually a bit of a a bit of an expert he's been posting these uh way home fest hacks to get people ready on reddit uh the way home subreddit uh with different things that they should either be knowing or have prepared and i thought it'd be a really great thing to kind of ask him some of the basics and some of the more essential tips how are you doing today andrew i'm great thank you thanks for having me that's awesome we're glad that you're here so can i call you uh, a festival camping survivalist is that cool? I'd say that's a fair uh, statement. Cool. We have our first survival list on. Nice. Now, you've <laughs> been to Bonnaroo five times now, is it? Yep. Okay. So you've gone to Bonnaroo five times. Now, you normally RV camp there, but have you also done regular tent camping there? Uh, well, the first two years we went, there were so many of us that went down in the RV that it didn't really hold us. So the first two years were sort of a combination of RV life and tent camping. Mm. Okay, so you're not totally slumming it this time. You do have a bit of experience doing the actual tent camping. That's correct. And uh, I guess before you uh, get further into the camping, what what is your overall like concert um, experience and history? Like, do you go to a lot of normal shows and and, in venues and stadium shows? Um, I've been going to concerts for many years uh my dad through a contact got me tickets to my first concert which was weird al yankovic nice. um, back when i was in public school and sort of since then through that contact and through my own interest i have been quite a music buff uh over the years um i'll always rather attend a show that's outdoors than indoors um but uh really when if a band's coming that i need to see i'll go see them wherever I need to. Very cool. Uh, so, uh, looking at the lineup for Way Home, is this like, so since you've been to Bonnaroo and now this is the very first one and it's related in, in a way to Bonnaroo, Way Home, what do you think of the lineup so far? Or whatever the lineup is. <laughs> I mean, I was very surprised almost by the weight of of the artist on the lineup for an initial year um i know there was the affiliation with bonnaroo and uh, obviously they were able to sign up some artists because of that connection but as you're saying for the first major camping festival in canada i was i was definitely surprised by even the initial lineup and that was before uh, neil young was added Mm -hmm. so we have uh headlining the three days is neil young and then kendrick lamar and Mr. Sam Smith. Dakota, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, I, I've gone over in past episodes, but mm-hmm. I, I think the lineup is actually pretty strong. Like, I, I have some minor quibbles while I think... Like, uh, I don't think I've asked you about the addition of Neil Young. 
Oh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. You know, originally it's supposed to be Alt J as the third headliner, and Alt J I, I quite like, but I don't think they're on real headlining status. And for a first year festival, I'd be like, oh, you, you know what? That's fine. You know, their first year, they still got two pretty big names mm-hmm. where they're headlining at other festivals. Alt J isn't your typical headliner, but um, the way I was looking at it is Bonnaroo is four days. On the first day, on the Thursday, they don't have a real headliner. They don't even have the main stages open, just the small tents. And I was thinking maybe they're trying to do something similar. Well, whereas like they'll still have the main stage open, but, you know, it's not going to be your traditional, you know, stadium chart topping headliner. Alt J in its own right in the indie pop rock world are pretty big. Uh, So it it sort of made sense to me. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm down with that. I know some people kind of thought it was a bit weird that there wasn't bigger names uh but when neil young was at it it was like no these these guys are are, are dead serious they're they're gonna try to make this as good a festival as it can be my, my only real quibbles with it are, are very minor that outside of neil young there's no you know legacy or older acts that are playing you know sloan is the oldest band playing and they didn't become popular till the early 2000s which isn't that long ago mm-hmm. and it's very it's a little bit one note at times of being indie pop rock but still the bands that they do have are are all top notch either you know big big names or have great reputations as far as putting on great live shows you you really wanted kanye west on it didn't you hey you joke but i am a (laughs) fan and i did enjoy his bonnaroo performance were you at that show last year andrew yes i was and are did you like it or did you dislike it you can say you disliked it. It's okay. It didn't, it There's didn't hesitation. Live, it didn't live up to my expectation. I had seen him in Toronto when he performed, and that show was sort of it had, you know, all the bells and whistles that he goes on tour with that were that weren't really out there for the Bonnaroo show. Um, I think I had just really hyped it up in my head. I think like. If you're if you're not a Kanye fan, I may I guess I can see why you didn't like it. But as as far as you know, just the show goes, maybe it was a little bit underwhelming if you're comparing it to some of the other big headlining acts because Bonnaroo does really get the biggest of the big acts. And, and Kanye is going to be at the Pan Am Games though. Yeah, that was announced today when this is recorded, obviously. Um, and so I, my my I think where people are coming from is you know he's a sub. Slightly disappointment compared to some of the other big names that they have there. And then, you know, people just blow way out of proportion because it's the fun, cool thing to do to hate on him. Poor Kanye. Can't get a break. Now, I guess we should stick to the topic, yes. again, which is which is way home in, you know, knowing what you need to know for camping there, because most people, I'm guessing, have not been there. Yeah. Um, oh, Andrew. Of- yes. So I want to I want to lead this question. In. All right. All right you, you go first. All right, Andrew. OK. What made you want to post online to the world about camping festivals? Why? Why is this important to people? It started very organically in just wanting to be able to extend what I've learned over the years to people that will be attending Way Home or a camping festival for the first time. Um, I just wanted to help people sort of ease into it so they could have the best time that they could at the festival. Because in some of my experiences at Bonnaroo, there's a couple little things that can happen that could really alter, you know, how your day goes. Uh, for example, with the fest hacks, I've, I've done as much as I can to sort of warn people to wear sunscreen. And where that comes from is my first year at Bonnaroo. I didn't put sunscreen on my feet the first day. Oh. And they were swollen up so large that I couldn't fit them even in my loose skate shoes. So something as, as simple as that, you know, had a pretty catastrophic result. You know, the next day I could barely walk around. So, you know, that's that's it's not a highlight, but it's a it's a memory of mine from my first year. So I want to help people avoid situations like that. So when they look back on the weekend, it's all, you know, positive thoughts and not you know, I wish I had had, you know, a patch for my air mattress because I had to sleep on the ground after the first night. Like, it's small little things that you probably read and you don't think about too much, but the effect it can have on your weekend, it, it's 
exacerbated when you're in a field with really no other options. So I, I just really want to try and not tell people what to do, but sort of give them the idea of, okay, well, if you find yourself in this situation, you know, here's the remedy for that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that they can think about it themselves, you know, and, and something I was reading yesterday about even having a blanket at the main venue, something to sit on where you can take things out of your bag and they don't get lost in the grass. It probably doesn't seem like, you know, a huge help to be told to take a blanket, but that blanket can end up saving you a lot of heartache. You know, if you lose money or if you lose the keys to the RV, which is something we've had issue with. So these little things that probably don't seem like they're that helpful can actually just help you, you know, through the weekend without hitting these speed bumps. Very cool. And on your Reddit, uh, you have, I think, 13 topics or chapters there. Have you experienced all of these things? That's why you made them? They all have come from experience. I, I don't do too much reading into it myself when it comes to what other people have said. Um, I just really sit down and I put myself in the situation for the topic that I'm thinking of. And I say, okay, what would be my ideal situation for this? And I try to provide people with the materials or the instructions that are just sort of, okay, here's how you get to that ideal situation. Now, I guess getting to like the the nuts and bolts of them, what would you feel are, are probably some of the most important tips that, you know, if you if you say you want to go super minimalist and, you know, you can ignore almost all of it, what are what are the, the bare minimum things that people should either be bringing or knowing or should at least be conscious of when they're, you know, either packing their cars or going into the grounds to watch the shows? The top three things I would tell people about if I could only pick three are sunscreen, hydration, and by that I mean just having a bottle. You know, if you have a bottle of water, you're going to drink it. If you don't have a bottle of water, you're not going to drink it. So hydration, sunscreen, and for my last one, I would probably... This one's not really as tangible, but just sort of let your mind go. That would be my, actually, I would put that as your number one. Just, you know, I like to schedule things, but I also like to be able to go with the flow and going with the flow has allowed me to have, you know, an amazing time. So it's, that would be my top three things. Now, looking at this list, one thing that's surprising is cooking supplies. Are are people allowed to cook at this? I had no idea. Well, you're going to need to be cooking because you don't uh, mm. you you don't really have anywhere to go outside of. So you bring your own food. like frozen food, or do we need to like go out and hunt? <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> it's 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 a good question because I mean you can bring all the frozen food you want, but it's not going to be frozen the next day. So you really got to plan for things like that. Like frozen burgers are great, but if you're trying to cook them from thawed, they, they tend to just fall apart. So it's really, it's hit and miss with what you bring. Uh, anything you can't really keep that cold, like milk or, you know, cheeses, Mm -hmm. you know, once they get warm, they sort of turn to mush. So it's, it's, it's pretty difficult to, you know, you picture it at home and it works because it's in your fridge, but you transport that into a field with, you know, ice and it, it's a whole different story. There are a lot of wild chickens up in Barrie. Just putting that out there. So what, what food are you going to bring then? I like to focus on like a hearty breakfast. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, eggs are easy, uh, ham, bacon, mm, bacon, even pancake mix is quite easy. Anything you can put on sort of a, a griddle. Yes. Okay. Um, it's also really easy to clean up and it's pretty cheap. Um, when it comes to making, you know, elaborate meals for dinner, I'm not usually at the campsite when it comes to dinner time or even really lunchtime. So I try to focus on a hearty meal to start the day and then using the vendors sort of for lunch and dinner. 
I find for for me what I like doing for breakfast is if I'm not doing eggs and bacon, I like oatmeal. Uh, you know, bring either a kettle or just even a pot to boil some water, and it's super easy to make instant oatmeal. That kind of fills you up for the morning, uh, and that's that's pretty good. But eggs and bacon are definitely like a really good breakfast to fill you up. Wait, so did we establish already, Andrew? So are you going to be in a tent or are you going to be RVing <laughs> for way home? Yes. I will be tenting. Tenting, and Dakota, you will be... I'll be tenting as well. Um, we. I was originally going to see if I could try to camp near Andrew, but he's also going to be uh, in a group camping in one of the crews, and I think uh, that her, he's a little too popular for me. Oh, do you want to explain the crew thing? Because I'm not going to be camping. I'm staying at a friend's house. I need some bed. Sorry. <laughs> the, the, the cruise thing is somewhat hard to expand on right now because there's not a lot of information about it. It's... But you have sort your own tribe. Sprung up at the at the end, but it, they gave you the option to, yeah, start a group camping site. Um, we're still a little vague on the details, but basically, it's just to help in getting you closer to your friends when you're all arriving at separate times. Uh, and there's also going to be with the top five crews will get like priority camping which i think is pretty interesting but they're a little vague as far as yeah what is only mean? saying uh 100 people maximum get the priority camping but they're not saying how that's going to work is does, it the first does, 100 people to sign up is it the first 100 people to show up things like that and does priority camping mean like access to water well, everyone's going to have access to water. <laughs> what I think it means is that it's probably going to be closer, closer to the actual festival mm-hmm. entrance. Because if you're, for me at Bonnaroo, it was about a 25-minute walk Holy from my, my tent to to get to the gates of where the, the main festival is. I know Andrew's a little bit closer, but, you know, as soon as you're not right outside it, it's a bit of a walk. Um, so, obviously, what this is going to be is there's going to be group camping either way. Normally, you have to pay for a permit to get group camping. And group camping is like 20 plus people. That's not like eight people. Uh, so it's quite large. But they're they're sort of vague about how exactly they're going to break it down. And all five top crews have well over 100 people. And they haven't really explained how the prizing is going to work. So in that, I'm a little reluctant to sort of throw my weight behind it. I know Andrew's group was top five and now it isn't, but you know, mm-hmm. things can change. They still have another, was it Sunday is when the contest ends? Monday at 8 a.m. Monday, okay. Maybe we can push it here. We'll give it the live and limbo push. We're, is there like a link or how does that work for your crew? Yeah, there's a, there's a link. I can dig it up. Yeah, so we'll put that in the show notes. Go help out Andrew. Give him the live and limbo push. <laughs> private camping i guess <laughs> yeah <laughs> now i know this isn't something that you know seems very kosher to talk about but i think it's important to know do you have any uh good bathroom tips because you know when you're there for three days you're gonna have to go at some point the bathroom tips will all come from the time of day um you want to use <laughs> the the urinals or sorry you want to use the porta potties when you know they've just been cleaned um, my general rule is to take care of any sit down business in the morning, uh, after I see the septic trunk drive by and, and then just basically try to f- hold off until the next day and start again. That's pretty good because, you know, it gets hot out and, you know, heat plus smells don't usually go well together in the first place. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, you didn't go to best of all, did you? I didn't. No, that was the same weekend as Bonnaroo, mm. unfortunately. So oh, I yeah, got both of you missed Lawrence, it. Uh, elsewhere. Yes, but but I wanted to say at best of all, uh, VIP and media people got these luxurious trailers, and there was like wooden bathrooms inside of them. Ooh, aren't you fancy? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay, so two things on your topics that I really really like are the first is tech supplies. For me, this is probably the most important thing. Always bring an external USB battery pack. That is genius. Have has have you ever run out of battery at a camping festival, Andrew? Yes, and I mean oh. it's one of those things that we take for granted. Mm-hmm. You know, when are you ever three days away from a plug? I mean, it's not something you think about. It's just you know, you come home at night and you plug in your phone, or you plug it in in the car, or you plug it in at work. It's not you know 
people struggle to get to the end of the day with a you know and still have battery now tag on you know three more days of that and it's uh it becomes quite a struggle now do you want to share your first experience of when that hit you and like and when you decided to include that on your list it was sort of twofold because at Bonnaroo in the States, you're also having a hard time getting reception, um, which also causes your battery to drain faster. Mm-hmm. Um, in my first year, my phone was dead by, I'd say, Friday morning, and it just stayed dead for the rest of the weekend. That is not good. No, I actually, it's it's almost comical how few, I mean, I would use my phone for taking photos and every year I come home with less and less photos. <laughs> year I didn't even have one photo of Bonnaroo on my, on my phone when I got home. You can't Instagram or uh, do a live tweet or anything like that. No, not at all. What I actually try and do is uh, scour the social media and find pictures that I'm in that other people <laughs> have taken. That's funny. That's yeah. pretty clever. I, I find for me when I'm using my phone, uh, a good thing to do is like i normally go with smaller groups andrew you normally go with larger groups so it probably works a little bit differently but if you're only going with like two three four people if you're either all at a show together or you're not meeting up until you know it's four o'clock and you're not meeting up again until seven i put my phone on airplane mode for a few hours and because either way it's in my pocket i'm probably not checking and that way i'm not losing pad battery power from it roaming take it out when I need photos, put it away. I'm not one to normally rail against people. Oh, don't take your phones out when you're at concerts. You need to be in the moment and experience it. You know, everyone experiences concerts in a different way. You're going to be working this one, though. I know. I, I know <laughs> I will. But, like, I, I really dislike it when, when people try to tell other people not to take photos or videos at concerts just because mm-hmm. everyone everyone wants to experience it in their own way. If it's that way, so be it. And you know yeah. what? I'm guilty of taking pictures on my phone for my own benefit as well and, and things it's like 2015. that. 2015. But putting if you know you're either not going to be separated from your group or you're all together or things like that, put your phone on, on airplane mode. That way you won't use any battery power. Uh, well, no more than it being on, of course. Are you going to bring a external battery charger? Absolutely. I got yeah. one for Christmas last year Very and good. it's been like the absolute best thing that I could have ever had because if I do, if I have to go directly from work to a show, I don't have time to charge my phone and if I'm writing reviewing the show, I take notes on my phone so my phone is constantly out. Thankfully, uh I I try not to bug too many people when my phone is out. I've only ever had one experience in and Sarah Ricks kind of shut the person down by... Uh, oh, yeah, that was at Will Butler. That was at Will Butler. That was a pretty mm-hmm. pretty funny experience. But the girl was way too drunk and trying to be snippy with me, and, and Sarah shut her down without me even knowing. Very good. Uh, Andrew, Did w- w- which battery do you use, a uh, battery charger? I can't think of the brand, but it's just uh, it's a pocket-sized version. Is it one that can like uh, last you 10 charges or something like that? Four well, charges? it's pretty small. It actually yeah. will last you about one or two, okay. and I just have multiple ones that yeah. I bring. That's very good. Um, and the second topic that I really liked is the one called Up Close for Your Favorite Band. I, I guess this one kind of reminds me of another article that says like the four different types of concert goers. You, e- you either want to be at the very front, or you want to stay at the sides, or you want to be at the back, or you want to be in the mosh pit in the middle. Which one are you? It really depends on the artist, but I there's something about being up close for a show and, and feeling the energy from the band and also the people around you that sort of, you don't get to experience that in any other part of life. So do you want to, in a nutshell, talk about if you want to be, if you're that person that wants to be as close to the front as possible, what are some uh, safe strategies to do so? Well, the safest strategy is just to be there first. If you've thought about, Bonner is a little different because the, the center area never closes, whereas at Way Home, the main venue will close each night and open each morning. So if you go early, I believe they said it would open at 11, but if you go and line up early, when you get through the gates, you can be the first person to that tent or that stage. All you got to do is tough it out from there. <laughs> If you are by yourself, it's much, much easier to move up in a crowd. Um, there's many shows that I have gone to. Royal Blood, for example, this year. I got there late, but I was by myself, so I was able to snake my way up through the crowd. 
Um, What's a polite way to do so? I like to go up the side and then move horizontally into the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a lot easier to walk in between two people, you know, that are front to back than it is to walk between two people that are shoulder to shoulder. Ah, that's a good tip actually. And really just sort of being polite and not being rude about it. You know, maybe that's the Canadian in us, but I've seen it from both sides. You know, if you sort of take it as a liberty to walk past someone, you know, they're going to sort of frown at that. If you ask permission, no one's going to say no to you. No one's going to say, no, I'm not letting you pass. So, you know, just sort of being cordial about it and respectful and not pushing people and just looking for gaps to, to move your way up. You'll, you'll get as close as you want, you know, pretty quickly. Have you crowd surfed before? I have not crowd surfed. I think I am. Cause you have I'm a whole section company. about that. <laughs> I'm in the wrong weight class for crowd surfing. Um, but like I said, it's, it's, it's part of the energy that you feel at shows. And I understand that it could be somewhat, you know, dangerous for the people below, but you know, the look I've seen on people's faces when they're crowd surfing is sort of, they're so joyful that I can take joy from that. So it's something I support and, you know, I'll help push someone along as much as I can when they come. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a fun part of seeing a show. I think another a good tip for getting a good spot is if you're not worried about being, you know, directly at the very front of the stage, but you still want to be pretty close. If you want to see, you know, um, uh, using an example, Neil Young, just because we were mentioning him earlier, obviously you won't be able to get this close to him. But whatever the act is right before him, if you go, you know, at the start of the act before and then slowly move your way up during that. So that way, you know, you're three quarters of the way, halfway up sort of thing. And then as people are leaving to go to another show, you know, try to make a dash for it as much as you can to move up. And you'll slowly, you know, be able to get pretty, pretty close. As long as you're giving yourself one, one to two acts beforehand, you could basically be at the front row. Very cool. Uh, so now that you got a chance to look at the map of Way Home and like the layout, what are your impressions of like the, the park layout? Do they have a good, is it like a good thing? Andrew? I mean, from the way it looks on the map, it looks pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, Bonnaroo isn't really squared off or, you know, doesn't have really the corners that it looks like the way home will. So hopefully it'll be easier for people to navigate around. Um, it's always a lot different when you're standing there than when you're looking at it on a map, but uh, it looks like a pretty decent setup from what I've seen on the map so far. Very cool. Uh, Dakota, you shared a link with me from the Aurelia packet and they were talking about how the festival is a go for sure, but then they're restricted to only 92 acres. Is this going to be an issue? Uh, I, I've been reading up on this and, and sort of following it along. It seems like the whole time there's been a little bit of contentious issues between the townspeople of Oro Medante and uh, the promoters of the show, which is, um, uh, I'm blanking on the names, Andrew, if you want to fill me in, AC Entertainment and Oh, Republic, Republic Live. Live, yes. That's it. Um, so there, there seemed to be some sort of contentious issue where... The, the townspeople thought that they were just, you know, invading their town and doing whatever the hell they wanted to. And the promoters were sort of on the fence being like, well, you know, we've been talking with the mayor and, you know, the government of Ontario and the government loves the idea of pumping millions of dollars into our economy. I don't understand why you aren't seeing this beautiful thing. But the townspeople are like, no, you're going to be loud and you're going to be bringing the hippity hop and all these kids on my lawn sort of thing, which... That's sort of what amounts to on that I'm seeing. They, I thought that's why they got Neil Young. <laughs> you know what? That, that's very legitimate that they may have got someone like him to sort of appease the local people to be like, hey, come out to our show. You get to see Neil Young. Um, but then this ruling that came out, I think it was yesterday, where they're saying that they're only having 92 acres, which by the looks of the map is just the actual festival ground. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Because what about all the camping people? It. it the promoters have kind of said for a little bit now that, you know, if if they're not up to, I don't want to say up to code, but if they're not 
you know, granted the the specific permits and permissions that they need, they're willing to just sort of pay off the fines and deal with it later and hope that, you know, next year they can make sure that all their I's are dotted and T's are crossed sort of thing, which is basic, basically what it sort of amounts to, that it's very minor quibbles and the townspeople are trying to take full advantage of the fact that, oh, you, you know, you, you, there's this one minor little thing in the bottom of the contract that you didn't properly agree to. So here we are. We're going to exploit that and try to shut down the whole thing. So I think right now I'm not worried. I think that they're going to pay any fines that come up and deal with it later. Um, Andrew, have you read anything that you think that it's not going to be a go? No. And I've never really thought that you know, any rulings would be able to sort of stop what they have in motion so far. I mean, I just, I, I can't see anybody making a ruling that would, would shut out 40,000 people to appease 200 upset Oro Medante residents. How big is that park supposed to be, Burles Creek? 500 acres or something? Uh, I think that's what they they have zoned off for their area. And like, for whatever reason, you know, worst case scenario, they're not allowed to use that area. It's not like they're going to be on people's properties. This is like open land where it's farmland, it's grassland. There's nothing that's there for them to sort of be impeding on. Cows? Not even. It's, it's It's been earmarked by... Um, you know, by the government of Ontario to be festival grounds and things like that. And Boots and Hearts are going to be there as well, which for some reason, the rural folks of Oro Medante don't seem to have as many issues with a country music festival as they do with a rock and hip hop and electronic music festival, which is a, you know, I don't want to say what that means, but I think people could draw the conclusions mm-hmm. if they want. And uh, so Dakota, I've asked you before you've mentioned it, but um, Andrew, which artists are you looking forward to at Way Home? Have you made your schedule yet? Yes, I have. It's That's a great question. If I was going to say an artist... Mm, per day, which ones? Per day? Yeah. Oh, geez, that's hard because I'm not looking at that. But uh, There is a Way Home app, and I guess they want us to kind of promote that too. You can get that on iOS and Android, and the links will be in the show notes. Yeah, and it's actually extremely helpful for, for organizing... And sort of going back to our, our cell phone uh, talk from earlier, after my schedule is all said and done electronically, <laughs> I'll have, like to whip out my colored pencils and just write them down, color-coded for the stages and the times on a piece of paper. I put that piece of paper in a Ziploc bag and I carry it in my back pocket for the weekend. So, you know, I if your phone goes dead or you forget where you're going. You always at least have a paper copy in your back pocket. That's a very good one. I did not think about writing it down and then putting it into a Ziploc. Very good, Andrew. Yeah, I didn't have the Ziploc the first year. It didn't last very long. Oh, man. <laughs> you, <laughs> thought, you thought you uh, figured it out and then the rain still yeah. got you. Oh, boy. Okay, so which artists are you looking forward to? I am really looking forward to seeing Modest Mouse. They're a band that I have liked for many, many years. And as you know, they didn't put out an album for eight years. So it's sort of, uh, it's been a long time coming. I I saw them at Oceaga last year, but still it's a band that, you know, I listen to every single week and there's not as much hype about them as if this, you know, had been, if it was just me going, then, you know, Modest Mouse would be all you're hearing about, but maybe it's because of my age and, you know, that eight year hiatus definitely put a put a gap in in who knows of them. But uh, how old are you? you? I'm 31. 31. OK, uh, about the same age. I'm 27. Sort of. <laughs> sort of yeah, <laughs> sort of a <laughs> few years off. But uh, how, um, Dakota, you which bands? For me, it's it's girl talk. That's my number one, which sort of frustrates me because my number two is Future Islands, and they're at the same time. So is that like the one a.m. thing? Yeah. So number one beats out number two, very very unfortunately. Uh, but there's a there's a whole bunch that I'm I'm really looking forward to. I think 
Base Nectar will be a pretty fun show. Uh, that's not normally my scene, but I think uh, I saw a bit of him at Bonnaroo and it, it looked quite exciting. So I'm excited for that. And then smaller bands like Always and Viet Cong and Mets and things like that. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of acts on this lineup that I'm excited for. I want to see had- Courtney, uh, Courtney Barnett. Oh, she's my number two. Yeah, she's going to be she great. She is incredible. Very cool. I've never seen her live. I saw after uh, Tovlo at Bonnaroo, I walked over and caught her last two songs, which were my two favorite songs. And uh, she's she's my favorite artist of 2015. Oh, really? Wow, that's a big one. Okay, that's cool. We'll keep an eye on her then. Dakota, did you have any um, other tips from your side of Bonnaroo? Uh, from my side. Um... Or from what, what? what's the worst experience you've gone through at Bonnaroo? that you wish you could have uh, redone? You know, I, I think I've been, I've been pretty lucky. Um, you, you know, I find I wear usually shorts and sleeveless shirts or t-shirts during the day. It looks like way home is going to be a little bit cooler than Bonnaroo is. It looks like it's going to be about 23, 24 degrees uh, right now, uh, which isn't super hot. So, you know, shorts and t-shirts are good, but then I also like to have, a uh, a long sleeve t-shirt or uh, a thin sweater that I keep in a backpack. So that way at night or when I'm heading back to the campsite, it gets pretty chilly at night that you have something warm to wear um, and understand that, you know, it gets hot during the day. It's going to get quite cool at night. So if you have sleeping bags or something like that, you know, either sweatpants or a hoodie or something like that to kind of keep you warm overnight, it's probably a pretty good idea. Uh, I know Andrew mentioned it sunscreen, but really, sunscreen and more sunscreen and sunscreen like you you really you're standing outside in the sun from the moment you wake up until 9 30 at night you're going to be in the sun and you're going to burn it doesn't matter how fair or dark you are keep putting it on um water drink water 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 like if you're not going through three or four you know bottles of water like refilling your bottle of water up you're probably not doing something right. <laughs> the nice thing is like when you're when you're in the sun and the heat for so long, it sort of gets evaporated out of your body so you're not running to the bathroom every hour. So that's why it's kind of even more important to keep drinking because the water is going to be evaporating. If you go, oh yeah, I had water with lunch, I'm good until dinner time. No, you're not. You need to keep drinking more water. Um, those, those are really like the biggest things as far as like, you know, to keep your, your wits about you. I like to bring in some snacks when I go, you know, are you allowed uh, to bring in snacks? You, yeah, you usually okay. can. Um, they don't want you to bring in a full meal because you know, that takes away money from the vendors. They don't want you to bring in like, uh, a steak or something, obviously nothing ridiculous like that, but like things like granola bars, almonds, bananas. Apples. Those are allowed. Yeah. Snacks. Are, are definitely allowed. Um, I also like uh, making peanut butter sandwiches. Anything that's like really high on protein or carbs is going to be good for you because you're not going to want to leave a show just because it's six o'clock just to go get some dinner. You know, sometimes you might not have dinner until 9 30, 10 o'clock because that's when, you know, your shows are over and you finally are passing by the food vendors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I like to, I like to always keep a whole bunch of almonds or granola bars in my backpack because you know that kind of will tide you over if you if you're eating a little bit it's good to just kind of have those high protein high carb snacks andrew what kind of uh clothing or what 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 kind of stuff would you recommend our listeners bring in their backpacks like types of clothing hoodies what um a hoodie might be too much just to carry around all day um, Joe Fresh actually has some long sleeve hooded t-shirt material. I really enjoy those because they're extremely light. You can roll them up really tightly and fit them in a small pocket of a backpack, but they'll still give you that, uh, you know, they'll still give you that warmth of having, you know, material on your skin when it comes to nighttime. Uh, another good thing is just a pair of long socks. Um, you can keep yourself, you know, quite warm if your legs are covered, especially if you wore shorts out during the day, you don't need to go back and grab pants. If you just have a pair of knee high socks, 
you know, the striped ones or something with comics on them, anything like that can really just sort of uh, save you from catching a chill at night just by covering up your arms and covering up your legs. Very good tip. Uh, are, are, do you plan on going to any food trucks? Uh, yes, actually. Food trucks are actually some of my favorite uh, parts of, of the festivals is trying the different food. And actually, uh, one of the food trucks that will be at Way Home catered my wedding uh, we had a festival themed wedding, so oh, we had to have a food truck there for that. Really? Yeah, that's Rancho, amazing. Do you have Rancho, pictures of your wedding? I do. They're online. Uh, you would probably know it's from Toronto Rancho Relaxo. It's a restaurant there. They yes. they operate a food truck, and uh, yeah, I saw they. You can see on the app the different uh, food trucks that'll be at Way Home. Dude, that's amazing. That is cool. Uh, since you're like. Uh, pretty popular on the Reddit stuff. What is the most entertaining comment that you've received regarding your posts? I usually make some wise crack about them, but I'm sure that's not. Or have you seen any Dakota? <laughs> uh, have I seen anything? Usually it's just most people, you know, being very thankful or appreciative about what he's doing. I, I think he's doing a really good job and, you know, there's, um, several hundred people in this reddit community and it's usually something like oh yeah I, I never thought about that or also people being like hey those are some really good suggestions here's what i use for a similar situation for either cooking or sleeping or things like that and i think i think the back and forth has been really helpful uh, i don't know how much that's sort of influenced what you're writing about andrew uh, but but i definitely like seeing what other people are you know comparing and contrasting and be like, oh, Canadian Tire sells this, or you can get that from Walmart or the dollar store sort of thing. I really enjoy, like you're saying, is when people expand on something and it's, you know, something I've never even thought of. Yeah. And it's a great idea. And I think, you know, in my five years, I've never come across this situation. But chances are, if I go another five years, I'm going to. So, you know, I'll, I don't consider myself an expert. I'm always just trying to help people out. But at the same time, through starting the conversation, I'm learning just as much from other people's experiences, you know, which I can incorporate in the future, you know, in my dealings of, of talking to people, friends or new people or, or people like yourselves, and just really just trying to, you know, get everyone ready so they can have a great, a great weekend. The one that caught my attention, I was reading, um, uh today um it's from i can't even pronounce this username k w keith o ku keith o whatever uh <laughs> about a month ago uh, he says he attended glastonbury last year and uh he got lost with his friends but what they had was uh, a canadian flag with them and i guess you know like when you watch those glastonbury uh, live videos you see all those flags in the air i guess that's how he reunited with his friends with a flag so i, I like I, I like that comment I actually had the exact same experience this year at Bonnaroo. We lost one of our teammates at the Childish Gambino show. And we didn't, we had one text after the Childish Gambino, and it was from her telling the five remaining people to meet at the Canadian flag at Mumford and Sons. <laughs> now, Mumford and Sons was performing in the big stage, which can hold up to, you know, the 80,000 people that are there. So we just wandered into the stage and just looked over the crowd for the first Canadian flag we could find. Sure enough, it was waving right up at the front. We got close enough and could see her underneath the flag. And with no words sort of exchange other than that text message, you know, we all reunited uh, for that show. We're in a great position to watch it. And that was really one of the highlights of, of my weekend. I love it. I love that. Now, it seems like way home it, some some festivals call them totems some call them rage sticks different things it seems like way home is saying that you can't bring them inside oh no flags out. allowed is that what i is that what i'm reading did you can you clarify that andrew um i'm reading it the same as you i don't think that they'll be allowing i mean bonnaroo doesn't either it's sort of one of those things this year for our totem we we wrapped it in colorful tape and wrapped it in our cooling towels just to sort of pass it off as a walking stick. I don't know. That was our logic. So, I mean, 
when, where there's a will, there's a way. You can get anything into any place. So, I mean, I've never been asked to take it down once it's in there. I have had my totems confiscated while going into the venue. But, uh, you know, that's just sort of part and parcel. They'll hold it there and you can pick it up on your way out. So it's, it's really, you know, you might as well try. Yeah, my the group that I went with this year to Bonnaroo, um, they had made, uh, I don't know if anyone plays the video game Dark Souls, but uh, they made, this girl, she made a homemade stuffed figure of one of the characters, a guy named Solaire. He basically looks like a knight, so everyone thought it was the knight from uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail, which <laughs> it wasn't. Everyone kept going up and saying, we are the knights who say knee, and things like that, but it wasn't that. There's a few people who actually got it, but it was stuffed. And when we were going through line through security, they said, oh, you can't bring it in with it stuffed. You have to take the stuffing out. So they took the stuffing out and then basically had to restuff it inside with like T-shirts and garbage bags and things like that because they wouldn't let us in mm. with it, which was kind of weird. And they just taped it to an umbrella and held the umbrella up. I think they banned uh, selfie sticks. I think they're doing that for all festivals. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you, describe your totem again if people want to find you there. Uh, well, for this year, what I have is a, it's a collapsing pole. It's just made of carbon fiber, and it's about 13 three-foot lengths, and it just extends up from there. And I'll, I'll put a flag on top. Uh, the flag is sort of interchangeable. I'm not quite sure which one I'll use for way home. Um, I'm also hoping that because we're in Canada and cell phones will probably be working a bit more, I won't have to rely on it as much. But in the past, it's really been the only way of you know reconvening with, with people in an area that that's large with that many people in it. I'm reading that they're going to be putting up additional cell towers, but that can only do so much. Yeah, I find like even when I'm at Echo Beach, Ontario place, uh, when I was there for Digital Dreams, I could send text messages, but it would take sometimes, you know, half an hour to an hour for the recipient to get it. You know, I'd walk out of the crowd and all of a sudden I'd have three mixed text messages that all came in at once when in reality they'd been coming over the last hour or two sort of thing. So even if there is, even if you are getting reception, there's no... There's no guarantee that it'll actually go through and the person will get it. Uh, another good thing to, to kind of do is find a spot on day one that's very specific and sort of impossible to miss and make that your meeting spot if you know all other forms of communication go down. Oh, that's a good one too. Um, and not just be like, oh yeah, the tree by the stage. That's not specific <laughs> at all. If you go, you know, um, here's a... A hot dog vendor with a crazy sign you know if we get lost let's meet at this specific vendor um at bonnaroo there's a whole bunch of sort of like unofficial landmarks there's a fountain there's um something called hamageddon which is this giant pig that blows out fire uh things like that where i'm sure way home is going to have art installation so if you pick something like that that's a good place for you and your friends to meet up good points at good points all right, Andrew, uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, where can uh, all of our listeners find you? Um, just basically Reddit is my, my form of choice. And your username is O-R-G-I-Z-M. I-Z-M, yep. Orgism. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Dakota, did you want to? Xbox 360 username since I was a teenager, so it's sort of stuck with me. Uh, very nice. <laughs> Dakota, did you have any last uh, words? Yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter at DGAPA, but also I would really appreciate if everyone sort of uh, gave the Capsule Sister podcast uh, a listen and subscribe to. It's called ContraZoom. You can find us on Twitter at ContraZoomPod. Um, and, you know, in the past we've covered Mad Men, um, the Marvel movies. We've also had some interviews with... Uh, the writer of the new Batman versus Superman movie. Uh, and we also cover really old movies as well. So, you know, it, it's sort of all over the place and, and Andreas and I have a really fun time. So if you like movies, both new and old, I implore you to check it out and give me your feedback. 
do that. And you can find myself on Twitter at Sean Chin. You can follow this show at Live in Limbo and use the hashtag Capsule Podcast to join in on the conversation. Please subscribe to this show and ContraZoom on iTunes. Give us five stars and leave some nice words in the review section. And you can find all the show notes at liveandlimbo.com slash capsule. Take care. Thanks for listening.